Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Gypsy Poet Radio here on blogtalkradio.com front slash Gypsy Poet. I am the Gypsy Poet, and with me is the fabulous, the relentless, the magical girl, George. Yes, people say it with me. Girl, George. Girl, George. Girl, George. Girl, George. Oh, my God. Oh, boy, have we got a guest. And she hit home with me. Oh, my God. She hit home with me. <gasps> she has brought uh, onto the show a wonderful guest who uh, plays none other than one of my f- most favorite instruments in the world, which I play, live, and breathe, the keyboard, the piano, the 88, the wonderful Rick Jarrett. Everybody with me? Yes, I'm here. Hi, Rick. Yeah, How are awesome. you? Hey, George. How you doing? How's the weather in Nashville? It's a little warm. It's, it's uh, cold it's, here in San Francisco, Berkeley. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, it gets chilly out there. Well, uh, it, gets, uh, it gets hot for a couple of days, and then, then the fog comes in and gets cold for two days. So we go back and forth. Yeah. Uh, 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 like, like Mark Twain said, uh, what was the uh, the coldest winter he ever spent? What was the summer in San Francisco? Yep, that's it. Right, <laughs> <laughs> right. And Nashville, it gets real hot and muggy, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. We've got a lot of humidity down here. Yeah, we used to have a, a air conditioner in that little, uh, in that carriage house that we had downstairs. So I slept downstairs and Star was upstairs because I had the air conditioner. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it, it gets muggy. I've got the air conditioner going now. We, we've had to get uh, turn them on this week a little more, uh, a little earlier during the day now. So, so you knew pretty... Star and, and uh, you knew Star and her husband Steve, right? Hostack? Yeah, yeah, Steve Hostack. Yeah, Steve and I did, uh, Steve and I did some work together uh, with an artist called James Talley. Yeah, he's a he's a guitar player. He played guitar with us, and then then she ended up marrying him. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, I, I I don't think I was back in Nashville at that time. I was still living out in California. Well, that was like in about oh seventy three. Oh really? Oh, I, didn't, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I didn't really know. Well, she where got I was married to him time. before we went on the road to Stock Hook. We went on the road in '73. Oh, okay, okay. And well, he I, played with us before that since about 1972. He was our okay. guitar player. Okay, well I joined. And before uh, that, uh, we had Carrot and Biff. You know, you, you know uh, Carrot, right? Oh yeah, I know both of them. Yeah. Oh, I love Carrot. I haven't been able to find him. He was in our movie, but I haven't been able to find him on the web. Biff is on the web. Biff is all over the web. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Biff is everywhere. And, uh, yeah, he's still in Nashville. Whatever yeah. happened to Lump, our bass player? Do you know that black bass player, Lump? Yeah, yeah I, I remember him, but I don't know what happened to him. Cause I, he was I, cause I went great. back on the road in, in 74. Yeah. Who did you play with? You played with a group called uh, Cove that, that did the music for that movie Billy Jack? or Yeah, it was a group was called One Coven. Ten, One Ten Soldier. It? One Ten Soldier. You, was the movie One Ten Soldier, or was it Billy Jack? It was Billy Jack. Uh, 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 the title of the song was named One Ten Soldier. Uh-huh. And, and the, group, uh, the group's name was Coven. Uh-huh. And, uh, um, and, and, and we did that, and uh, we had a couple other albums out. We were, we were uh, pretty much an underground band out there. Well, uh, we that started... was a really famous movie in the hippie Ear was that? Oh movie? yeah, it was, it, it was a cult classic for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I didn't even realize it till just, <laughs> just a few years ago, you know. Oh, I always knew that, but I didn't know you were in it. Yeah. See. <laughs> yeah. It was, so what time you quite, started playing the piano? Uh, I started playing the piano when I was a kid. Uh, my dad was a piano oh. player too, and mm-hmm. uh, uh, he used to play with uh, big bands. He did. Uh, uh, he was down in Shores Band later for a couple of years, and he worked with uh, uh, Woody Herman and Snooky Lanson and the uh, Dorsey Brothers some, and and, uh, and then he uh, uh, he had his own band here in Nashville. He had a sixteen or seventeen piece band, I think. And uh, so so I, I got that from him because I used to sit and watch him play, and I can remember that I was so little I couldn't even see what, over the tops of the keys, but the keys going up and down really fascinated me. And 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 as, as as a childhood memory I've got, and I wasn't even tall enough to see it with the keys at the time, but uh, I just plunked around on it, and then uh, one day I I, I I hit two notes that sounded real good together, and I was hooked at that point. And then uh, the, the B3, I just uh, uh, when I got out of high school, 
Well, the organ was starting to come in when I was in high school, uh, and and all, all I could get a hold of at the time was an accordion, so I had to play an accordion. <laughs> 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 and uh, but uh, but I, I I really liked the the, the way it added to to the band and and uh, when I got out of high school uh, uh, I was I was living in, in Nashville and I went to work at a place called uh, the Hammond Organ Studios and they used to let me borrow the organs on the weekends for gigs and stuff and because uh, they had trade ins and stuff like that and and that's where I learned all about the B three because because I worked there for a, cu- a couple of years. And, and uh, I was actually a salesman, and I was sort of, you know, a, a gopher pretty much too, you know. Well, that but, must be hell having to carry around that big thing. Well, well, back when I was twenty, it was no big deal. Uh, <laughs> I, I would carry that and uh, and two Leslies and and a couple wow. other keyboards too, you know. I just uh, I, I actually had to buy a van just to transport my equipment <laughs> in, you know. And and um, but it was. I mean, the band didn't like it too much when we had to go go up and down stairs, and everybody had to carry that thing because it weighed a ton. But uh, uh, but we did, and and like I said, I didn't mind it then. But you know, it's a different it's a different story now. So how did you start playing with PG and E? Now that band was the first time I seen them. They were playing with jo- Joe Cocker as a film. The first time I seen Joe Cocker, right? Uh, and that was I'm, the most amazing I'm, show I ever seen. That whole show was just awesome. Joe Cocker, yeah. oh my God! Now you brought that up. <laughs> no, he didn't play with him at that time. He played with him after that, but he played. Yeah, with yeah I was I was still with Covenant at, 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 at that time. Uh, but, but I met them when I was at, when I was living out in L.A. And mm. we all got to be friends, and we jammed together and stuff like that. And then uh, when I moved back to Nashville, they came through and did a show, and I went down to see them. And they said they were looking for a keyboard player. I wanted to know if I wanted to join the band. I said sure. And and so that's how I I got hook, uh, hooked up with them. Uh, the guitar player actually still lives in Mount Juliet, Tennessee, which is about 30 miles from where I live. How long did you play with them? Uh, I, I played with them for a, a couple of years. Um, we actually had a had a PG&E reunion here in Nashville about three years ago, and and, and it was a it, it, it was a lot of fun. To, uh, we got back together. The guy, a couple of the guys drove down from Chicago and. Kenny Utterback, the guitar player, drove over from Mount Juliet, and we uh, uh, played for a couple of hours, you know. And it was a uh, we had a nice crowd, and it was a, a good reception, and it was fun getting back together. We we started playing, and it was just like we never stopped, you know. It was like uh, uh, I mean, it just all fell right into place. It was wonderful. It was a great experience, you know. Just, but but the band sounded real good. You played with Rodriguez too. Yeah, I played with Johnny Rodriguez. Uh, from 74 hmm. till about 77, and then I joined Crystal Gale and played with her oh, uh, of course. Good. Uh, until about 81. Uh, did you ever play with Eddie Rabbit? Um, we did a couple of shows with him uh, at, at one point. I'm not exactly sure when they were, but but uh, she did a, t- a TV show with him, too. Yeah, he was friend of show. I never met her, but we knew Eddie. Yeah, uh, uh, I, I, I met Eddie one time, but it was uh, it was pretty fleeting. I'm not really sure what all went on. I remember we were supposed to play some shows with him, and and, uh, and I believe we did. Things were so hectic back then; everything just blurred from one <laughs> to the other, you know. Just and for other reasons too. But you know. what about Odetta? You played with Odetta too? Yeah, uh, I, I played with her. I got uh, I got my gig with her out in uh, California. I was still living out there. And and uh, uh, she carried a trio behind her. She played her guitar, and, and we had uh, piano, bass, and drums behind her. And and w- and we we kept in touch over the years. Uh, I produced some stuff on her years ago back in Nashville, and uh, I talked to her about two months uh, uh, before she died. Uh, we were, we just became friends, and just and we continued to, to to talk over over the years, and just shoot the breeze and see how things are going, you know. But Did the, you she, hang she out at the Red Dog Saloon back in the seventies? Oh, the Red Dog, yeah. That was uh, when I got back to Nashville. When I first moved back, I, that's probably uh, I, I believe that that's the first place I went because I heard about it from, from a, few, a few people I knew and said the Red Dog was really happening. So, I, so I went down there, and that's pretty much where I hung out most of the time. That must have been nineteen seventy-one because it didn't last that long. It changed the name 
three or four times. Right. Yeah, I, I, I remember when it became Maud's Courtyard, you know. But, yeah, and uh, it was Calamity Jane's for a while, and it was Up Yours, I think, for a while. Yeah, I, uh, somebody told me it was Calamity Jane's, but I, but I only knew it as a Red Dog. Yeah. And, well, and, we uh, still called it the Red Dog, even when they changed the name. Well, Did you ever I, go to the Pancake I, Man in the middle of the night where everyone hung out? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. That was uh, uh, is what uh, what is now called the IHOP, you know, International House Pancakes. No, no, that's a different one. The oh, the, the the Pancake Man was hooked onto the hotel there, and the IHOP was down the street. Yeah, okay. Those are two no, different I, places. I don't think I ever went to the Pancake Man. Uh, well, that I, was I mean, in that hotel. I think the Hyatt or something like Motel or something. Okay, I mean, uh, uh, there's a possibility that I do. It just depends and on what kind of... And it stayed open I, I, all night. Everyone was oh, there after okay. after the gigs and after the yeah. sessions and and, and uh, DJ Fontana. Elvis right, yeah, it just, it just depends on, 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 on what time of night it was or whether I read... Oh, this members. is two in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> two in the morning, the all-night crowd. <laughs> okay, I, I, I can't really say for sure. They had some wrestlers that came in there, and one night some guy came in with a gun, was shooting the gun, and everyone was climbing under the tables. It was pretty wild west uh, back then. Uh, yeah, well, when well, well, Nashville was, I was I was really surprised when I came back um, as to how Nashville had changed, because I'd been on the road for years before that with different, with different groups, and... Uh, even before I joined Coven, I was playing back in bar, bar, bar bands and stuff. We traveled around and just you know different places. I didn't really spend a lot of time in town, and and uh, I was really surprised when I moved back from from, from California to, to what Nashville had become. Was it a big then, town now? I mean, the pictures you see all these big buildings. It was just little tiny buildings when we first came in. Yeah, well, I was I was I was born and raised here, so uh, oh, so uh, you know the town. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. When I first became aware of population, I forget how old I was. We, we only had forty thousand. <laughs> yeah, it was a small <laughs> town. We lived. I didn't see anything it so really small because I'm from the Bay Area, where I'm used to big towns, and that yeah. was a small town. It, it, it really was, but it, but it was a, it was a neat town. I mean, no, were, I loved were, it. Everyone was really sweet and friendly, yeah. and, and hung out together, and all the musicians and songwriters. It was fun. I loved it. Well, yeah, well, that, that that's what I mean. When I got back to Nashville, it seemed like 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 California followed me there. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh huh. It, it was it was just really weird. I got back. And I was going, wow, this is this is not bad, you know, because <laughs> I was. <laughs> Uh, 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 I was expecting to come back, and it was just going to be, you know, nothing but honky tonks and stuff like when I left. And and uh, and and to, to be honest, and I don't mean anything bad about this, but it seemed like things were a little bit narrow minded uh, uh, before I left Nashville. Yeah, it was pretty country <laughs> when we first got yeah. there, and then the Red Dog Saloon finally opened up, and and it just burst wide open. And you got those colleges there, so you had a, yeah. a ready-made well, crowd of people just waiting for a hippie thing to happen. So it all happened in like in '71 in Nashville. Yeah, exactly. And and, and I got I back. Loved just, it. <laughs> oh yeah, it was great. I mean, I got I got back, and it was it was uh, uh, it had changed. The attitude had changed a lot. Even in the music business, the attitude had changed. It seemed like well, they were Chris more. Well, <laughs> Chris did a lot of that. Chris kind of changed their mind a bit. <laughs> yeah. Chris could yeah, have Yeah. I, 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 I remember Chris. I bought him a beer down at the Red Dog one time when his plant broke, you know. <laughs> well, I, I met him in San Francisco before he we went to Nashville. He told me, oh, you should go to Nashville. So we up and went to Nashville. But it, yeah. it was fun. Every well, we were in the in crowd right off because we were friends of Christopherson, and so yeah. everyone adopted us immediately. You know, you know, uh, Chris Gantry and uh, who else? Uh, Bucky Wilkins. And oh yeah. Billy Swan and and, I and all, all those, those guys. people. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the yeah. kangaroo and, and, and you remember the kangaroo and, and uh, Big Crush in the armpits. Oh, they, they were sort of like Frank Zappa. Yeah. They were bizarre, bizarro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Steve Davis's band. 
they were great. <laughs> oh, they they were incredible. <laughs> they were what a great band. You know, I had more fun. Chicken with those guys. Day at 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 the college and carrots up there on drums with a skirt on and nothing underneath of it, and he's there spread legged drumming away, <laughs> and the stage is four feet above the crowd, so I mean you can see uh, right up. <laughs> oh, carrot was something else. I'll tell you, he was just he was something else. Uh, uh, I had a friend of mine, after I'd been in Nashville for a couple of years, uh, a friend of mine came here from L.A. Uh, he he worked with Frank Zappa, and, and Zappa's mm-hmm. the reason Coven went to L.A. in the first place. So that's an, uh, but that's another story. But he came to visit, and uh, he was in town doing some business, and we got together, and I took him out to a, a couple of clubs, and uh, he couldn't believe it. He said, he said, man, I thought L.A. was wild. <laughs> <laughs> he just couldn't believe it, you know. He had the best time of his life, and uh, mm. and it was man. The music was so good. Everybody was into all different kinds of music, and, and they were bouncing yeah. off each other. It was very creative, you know. Being around a lot of other musicians and songwriters, you know, you get all this inspiration of each other, and everybody was, you know, trying to trying to put something together. It was really yeah, well, cool. I loved it. It just seemed like a real magical time for music, you know. I mean, yeah, uh, very good time. Very good time. Uh, uh, over to I Exo, just put out a movie on. about it. They made a movie about me and Star in Nashville, and and, and it's, uh, the Adventures of Girl George and the Arizona Star, and Carrot yeah. is in it, and Chris Christopherson's in it. I just put it up on, on YouTube. Yeah, so I, I, it's gotten like 150 that. hits in the last few days, so, it, yeah, so somebody's watching it. Yeah, well, I've I've been watching it. (laughs) (laughs) See all your old friends. Rick, I have a couple of questions. Um, I have a couple of questions. Actually, what I want to ask is, um, do you feel that there's there's that same kind of magic in Nashville today as it was um, so so long ago? Uh, Not 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 really, to be truthful. It's it's really turned into a business now, and uh, Mm -hmm. uh, it's. I mean everything is done. It's written to program, and and uh, it's mm-hmm. just like I I can't tell one artist from another anymore. Really, is uh, it, well, it was that way before we came there. Before we came there, it was a button down town, uh, and it was all formula. And this is the way it's done. They had songwriters write the songs. They had people do the songs. They did what they were told. And it was that way until Chris came in and busted it loose and and kicked out the jams. And we came in and. And, and, and drove them crazy, but then when we left, it went back to being buttoned down. And this is business, and we want country, we want a formula, we want money, we want it exactly this way, and you do it this way or get out. But, yeah, so well, like, I'm not there anymore, so it don't matter. <laughs> so basically, what you're telling me is like, uh, you know, since the outlaws left, everything just went back to the way it was. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, it, it's always yeah, that it, way. It, There's uh, always a breakthrough, just like when punk broke through. It breaks through, mm-hmm. and it, it's like wild and crazy for a while. Then the establishment comes in and sticks their foot down. Yeah, and says, well, no. <laughs> well, at, 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 at the risk of, uh, of, of pissing off a lot of my friends here in town, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Nashville seems to be a, a, a city of followers, mm-hmm. and. Uh, it's, it's it's like back back when Nashville was in its pop stage. Uh, it, it was fine. We you know they were trying to to do pop music and stuff, and some of it was really good. Mm-hmm. And then one day Randy Travis comes out, and all of a sudden pop is gone, and everybody's looking for for another Randy Travis and, and a guy with a cowboy hat. And and ah. uh, and then Le- Leanne Rhyme comes out, and everybody was looking for a thirteen year old girl to sing. You know just. It's just, mm-hmm. it's just like, it, and it's probably like this in rock a lot too. But, but, uh, but, but I've noticed it more in Nashville, maybe because I, because I'm from here, you know, and I've been involved in the business all my life. Uh, but that's just what it seems like to me. And, well, that's uh, the way it is. It's just something pops out, like when rock and roll first came out, 
and, and it's the freshest and the newest thing, and everyone's doing something new, and then the company comes in and melts it down and makes it a formula, and it's just blah, blah, blah. And then something else punks through, like, you know, the Beatles come through and, and, and do something different, and then it melts it back down, they pull it back down, and they give you a disco. No, 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 no more live music. Yeah. Just just go on drums and machines. And then something else, <laughs> punk goes through, or the outlaw movement goes through. But it's only short periods of times that that mm-hmm. artists break through, break on through from the underground. Oh, like yeah, the this, yeah. But it only lasts like a, a couple years, three, four years. Mm-hmm. And, and then, then the companies come down and, and put it formalized and, and kick out the crazies. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's, uh, I mean, there's a lot of people here that have been complaining about that because the stuff that they're putting out nowadays, uh, most of us don't really consider country. Yeah. But uh, uh, we consider, uh, uh, I, I call it bad rock from the 70s is what I call it. Yeah, it seems uh, that uh, way. They, 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 uh, they add a fiddle Kid and steel rock. to it. Kid it Rock country. came out, and he came out of the punk ear. I'm not punk, but rap. Rap, he was doing yeah. rap. And now mm-hmm. he's doing country. Actually, I like the sound of him, but I can't stand looking at him. God, he looks so awful. <laughs> uh, disco seems to resurface for a couple of months uh, when there's nothing going on and everybody's trying to figure out what they want to do next, you know. Uh, a disco would come back every so often like that, and it seemed like well, like they, they, they would have a new flurry of artists come out, and then everything was settled down, and all of a sudden disco would start climbing back up for about a month or two. <laughs> And then it would yeah. disappear. <laughs> they got to find and something else to copy. Somebody will <laughs> right. break through, sort of and like, then everybody will copy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah they got to find something to kill some time while they're trying to figure out what uh, 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 what the next big thing is going to be. Yeah. But <laughs> so we, they we, can we, copy we, that. Yeah. So so we did, the, did discover that, that, that disco really moved to Europe. <laughs> We're at <laughs> France. Uh, all, all, all over. We, we went to some places over there, and they, and they were playing all that stuff. It was I just think all, Japan all, likes all, all too. disco, and that was just a few years ago. So Japan, I think, likes disco too. Uh, yeah, I've only been been to Japan once, and that was back in uh, I think 1969 or 1970. No, no, I'm sorry, it was uh, it was not 1979. That's when it was. It was a uh, World Song Festival, and they had this Japanese band that, that was uh, opening up. Well, they were a pretty big band in, in, in Japan, but it was like Japanese Rolling Stones. I mean, they had these guys copied down to a T, and it was just amazing. You know, they, I mean, they they really were they were they were really good. They just did a lot of Stone stuff, but it was all in Japanese, of course. And uh, but 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 they were pretty good. It was it was a, a different experience for me. Who all have you played with that we would yeah. know? Uh. I play with Jay Reed and uh, Johnny oh, Rodriguez, of course. Uh, Johnny and I still do a little work together every now and then. Rodriguez, and, uh, right? Yes, uh huh. And well. uh, I play with Crystal, and I play with Mel McDaniel for a while, and uh, I did a little work with uh, uh, Ben Vereen. Uh I worked with Sharon Cobb and uh, Tex Cobb on a on a record for him. It was actually a, a title song for a movie called Buy and Sell. And just uh, uh, just different acts like I worked with Buddy Holly's Crickets for a while, oh. and uh, yeah, yeah, we had a good time. We had a lot of fun together. They were some good guys, and 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 just different groups like that. And I got in, into doing a little bit of production and, and stuff, some uh, uh, things on my own. But 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 that was about it. I, I was I was lucky to have some good artists. I got with some good artists that I really enjoyed working with, and. Uh, uh, you you hear a lot of horror stories about about some of these artists, and I, and I was just lucky, I guess, that I didn't I didn't get with any of those. The ones that I had, I, I really enjoyed working with every one of them. And wow, uh, awesome. we're out uh, in California. Were yet? Were you in San Francisco or L.A.? No, I, uh, I I live down in L.A. I we was here for been, about twelve years. I like L.A. Yeah, I did too. Oh, we lived in the Hollywood Hills, right behind Grauman's, which is now in Mance, I believe it is. Oh, I but, know where it is. And, and, I live in Los Feliz. It's right down the street. Oh, I was going to ask, um, are there any projects that you're working on currently? Uh, 
<clears throat> I've got uh, I've got one possibly coming up next month, but I'm 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 really just sort of taking it easy now, just going out and playing uh, a few weekends here and there close by the house, and I just play to go out and have fun anymore. You know, just I just it's been nice getting back and just having fun playing it again, and and not worrying so much about the money. You know, just it's just. Um, I'm not really working on 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 much. I'm I'm about semi-retired, I would say. I mean, I still go out and play and do a couple of things for a few people. Uh, You're a but, father, aren't you? Happy oh yeah. Father's mm-hmm. Day. Well, yes. Thank you very much. I've I've got. Uh, yes. I had two sons and a daughter, and uh, and 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 one son and and my daughter gave me grandchildren, and I'm a granddad now too. But but. Uh, but, but but they've just really uh, really been the joy of my life and 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 probably the biggest reason I had to come off the road, you know. But, so they're all in Nashville. Your, your no, actually we're here. still scattered to the wind uh, 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 <laughs> of the winds, the four winds. And uh, my my daughter lives in Key West, Florida, and uh, m- and my son lives in New Orleans. And he's been he's been down there for about ten years. He works at WDSU. He's a digital media manager, and he's been there for for years. And uh, he's he's doing great. He's he's won some AP awards and stuff. And my daughter is is has her own accounting firm in uh, in Key Largo. And, and needless to say, I, I I like going to visit either one of them. <laughs> 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 they live in some pretty neat places. Best best time is in the winter, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, yeah, I guess that's, uh, it gets hot there in the summer. Oh man, it gets it gets unbelievable in, in the summer. I mean, if, if I'm going down to visit, it's usually in late fall or early winter. <laughs> that's the best time to go, you know. So you don't see the the grandkids that often, huh? No, I'm afraid not. My uh, my daughter's thinking about moving back up to Nashville at some point, and and uh, which, is, which would be great because I, cause I I love seeing my kid, my grandkids. I love seeing her too, you know, but but. Uh, but but my grandkids are great. I just I just have so much fun with them. Well, uh, I live with my daughter and the grandkids, and I take care of them when they're they go to work. So I see mine all. I got a girl and a boy, six year old and a three year old. Oh, lucky you. <laughs> yeah, and then when they go, to, I live downstairs. They live upstairs. So when they go to work, I have the grandkids. So I see them all the time since birth. So we're pretty close. I only had one kid, one girl. Oh. <laughs> Well, 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 that's 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 great though. You know, you got your grandkids to play with and stuff. Yeah. Is the exit in still there? Yeah, the exit is is still here. Uh, the block has changed quite a bit. The rock block has changed. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But the exit is still here, and they have a lot of acts. Uh, I've played down there a couple times. They got a bigger stage, and it's more up and it, it's higher up in the air now. And uh, of course, you enter from the street instead of going around to the side like we used to. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But uh, the block has has become more bandyized, as I call it. You know, it's, it's uh, mm-hmm. the Vanderbilt students and all that have pretty much taken it over, and it's just it doesn't have the vibe that it used to have. It it used to have such a fun vibe. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, it, it, at least to me, of course. Well, I'm, now I'm sure it's that, more of a showroom than a, a hangout for the musicians. You know, that's that's. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Because yeah. the Red Dog was a hangout. It wasn't just a showroom for people to pay and see traveling groups that came through. Now, yeah, yeah like exactly. And it was like like Mississippi Whiskers was the same way. You know. It, yeah. I mean, How you know, about that Elson Place food place? It, they had the greatest home cooked food there. Is that still there? What, what, what the gold the rush? Elson Place, I think was. Oh, called. oh, the Elson Place soda shop, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, dream Elson, about that place. I dream about going to Nashville just to eat there. It, it's it, it's still there. When I was in high school, I, uh, I went to high school up the street at, at Father Ryan, which is uh, uh, they had the the Fridays there, the TGIF that uh, uh, that was torn down. But up in that, but, but right up there was where Father Ryan was, and so we used to go to the Elson Place soda shop. Every morning and uh, and get cokes and stuff be, uh, before school. So that place has been there like forever, you know. Oh, I and, love and, the food there. It's good. Oh, you know, the food was incredible, you know. But but everything else in in, in the place looks pretty much the same. I was down there a couple of years ago. 
I drove through and I thought about going and uh, and, and giving one of those burritos over to Gold Rush and just, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I changed my mind. I, I, I figured I really don't need to get one of those right now. <laughs> well, they had okay. greens and beans and all kinds of soul uh, food there. That was so cool. Oh, uh, they, they right, were great, guys. man. Yeah, I just wanted to give you a heads up and let you know that our time is actually up and I need to wrap up the radio program. Oh, my God. Okay, good so talking to you, Rick. Yes, you, you do, absolutely. George. Yes. And, it was a and, wonderful and, afternoon. And thank you, Gypsy Poet. I do appreciate it. <laughs> oh, and any time, any time. This is the Gypsy Poet saying, Girl, George, you are awesome. Thank you for bringing on our buddy Rick, the 88 man, Derrett. Oh, wow, great stories, rich stories. Oh, boy, rich compilations, and oh, my goodness, please check him out whenever you possibly can on the web. He's got amazing stuff out, and he's got great stories that he told us this afternoon, so don't miss this podcast, which later it will be archived. Okay, this is the Gypsy Poet saying adio for now. Wow. Take a ride.